Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Our scenario is Sunspots. It was written by Dave Solikowski, Sokolowski, sorry, and is available from Drive Through RPG. Our game master is Tyler Hudek, and this is episode two. Our recap will be given by David Gasaway. So, without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. David? So, our story so far, <clears throat> I'm P.I. Mason Flynn. I and five other uh, acquaintances and friends of one Daniel Peterson were summoned by him in late February of 1926 during one of the worst blizzards in New England history. Uh, Daniel's very distressed because he has not been able to ascertain the precise whereabouts of his daughter, Susan, who left Evergreen University in the western part of the state for a religious retreat and didn't come back to school. He explains to us that he's been to where the retreat was held, a small vacation spot called Red Valley, and he could not convince her to return home or to school. We notice in this conversation that he has an unusual tan for somebody who's living in New England, and he can't explain it. But we travel on. We go to the college town of Evergreen and split up into two groups. One investigates Susan's dormitory, some of us through the front, like gentlemen, some of us through the back, like scoundrels. But we all end up in Susan's room where we find her diary, which is the most important thing. Although there is a curiosity, which is that her winter clothes are in her closet and her summer clothes, well, she hasn't any there. Her diary tells us about a fellow named Benjamin who has a crush on her and a pastor that she might have a crush on. The other group goes to the First Presbyterian Church of Evergreen, which was organizing the retreat to Red Village, uh, Red Valley. Uh, and that's a curious situation because even though it's the only church in town, it seems as though no one's been there for weeks. And inside the cold and empty church, there is a quantity of luggage left behind with clothing and whatnot in it. And what's not left behind are any of the church pews which have all been removed. From there, we head toward Red Valley uh, through a blizzard in the high hills of Western Massachusetts. Uh, there is some dangerous uh, incident with a car, but we all make it out and through and continue to pass through frigid snowy hills under dense cloud cover until it stops being dense or frigid. And as we pass toward the small village of Red Valley, the sky opens up and the snow is melting off the trees. There's a friendly sound, welcome, a sign welcoming us to Red Valley, population 450. And as we move into the town from the highlands, we can see essentially a summer village. More than 450 people apparently, gallivanting around what looks like a vacation town. In mid-July, the late winter sun is nearly at noon. And that's where we left off. Great. So as, as we said before, as you pull into Red Valley, you're, I all sent you uh, the maps. Uh, if you go up, you start going up uh, off of Route 238, which is where you came in off of uh, uh, from Evergreen, uh, which very quickly turns into Franklin Avenue. Uh, the, the thing you notice as you pull in, though, um, like we said before, is that there's lots of uh, cars there. Uh, there's lots of people uh, just kind of sitting around, uh, really not doing much. You see a beach off in the distance with people playing in the lake, playing on the beach, or just sitting around and enjoying the, the weather, which is a total opposite of what is going on outside of this small valley. Uh, so as you uh, all pull in, um, where uh, do you uh, think you're going to park? It's hard to kind of drive around everybody, uh, everybody in, in all the cars. Well, Didn't we learn that the, the congregants were staying by some cottages? 
Yes. Yeah. And, and in fact, as you drive in, you can see the cottages to your right. So I I'm, think we should head there first, right? Yeah, I'm just going to pull into the cottages area there. There looks like a lot of room there to park, if nothing else. Okay. Uh, so you pull in. Uh, you're able to kind of maneuver around and find uh, some spaces. Uh, you can't... Uh, the the way that the uh, cottages are set out is they're in a very large semicircle with a road going in front of them. Uh, you can see uh, one of the uh, cabins uh, set around the, the outside of the semicircle is very obviously the, uh, the um, uh, office. Uh, and normally you would probably park in the middle of that big semicircle where there's a very large field, except you see first a church bus as well as a number of pews uh, placed in the middle there uh, and in front of the pews at the very end of the semicircle, a, uh, a pedestal, oh, and pedestal is not the right word, like a, like a stand uh, for somebody to stand up and preach and then a large number of people just standing there holding hands in a circle. So a pulpit. Like a, like a prayer circle, yeah. Yes. The, um, the, the sign for the cottages says, uh, sunshine cottages, no vacancy. Well, we're just going to park temporarily, I think. Is there anyone speaking at the pulpit, or they're just congregated and waiting? They're they're all just kind of well, they're they're not even waiting. They're all just kind of standing around in, in a circle, holding hands. Um, everybody, give me a spot hidden. Okay. No. Oh, oh two. Um, Oh, nice. I just got a standard. So standard. for those of you who, uh, who made it, you can see at one point in the circle is, is somebody who you would assume is the pastor. He's kind of dressed in like a nice, uh, well, he, he was dressed in a suit. He's wearing like a long sleeves uh, and, and, and nice slacks. Uh, although, you know, with the weather being what it is, and it's probably like 80 degrees right now, upper 80s that um, you know, his jacket's off, his uh, collar's undone, and you can see just kind of the sweat stains in his, on his shirt. But he only has one hand that he's holding on to the, the person next to him, and the other hand is kind of held up against his chest as if he's holding something. And the one hand that he's holding, is it Susan's? I think we've ascertained that we all know what she looks like at least. Yeah, you, you do not see Susan here. Uh, as you get out, Daniel starts, uh, who's still with you, uh, starts going, this is, this is her church. This is who she was with. Well, uh, the first thing I do is take my jacket off and put it in the car because it's yeah. stinking hot. <laughs> let's, not, let's not interrupt their prayer service, but as soon as it breaks up, let's talk to the pastor. How many people are in this circle? 20, 40? I would say about 30. Okay. Is a fairly large number. And are um, they kind of homogenous? Is it like mostly young people? No, it, it's actually a mix. You, um, so you know that the, uh, the winter retreat was like the youth retreat, uh, essentially. Um, there's definitely, you know, there, there's some people who you would consider probably in their late teens up into their 20s. Um, but there are people who are much older than that, probably, you know, 30s all the way up to 50s or 60s. Probably residents. Yeah, how, are they, how are they dressed? They're all wearing um, summer clothes uh, or so just, just street clothes. They're not like wearing like <clears throat> robes oh, yeah. or vestments or not. Okay. Yeah. No, it, you, you kind of get the idea that some of them may not have been prepared for uh, warm weather. And so they're, you know, they're, they're clothes. Like they may have had like a, uh, you see like one or two people who had a, uh, like a nice uh, button up shirt, but they like ripped off the sleeves just to kind of keep it cool for themselves or they're, it's, it's unbuttoned. Some of them, um, some of the women you, uh, some might consider, you know, the way that they're dressed a little scandalous as well. Uh, you know, they're not, you know, fully dressed, uh, not that they're running around naked or in their underwear, but uh, you know, not something that you would expect. You know, Odie, <clears throat> um, they're not dressed in any certain way. You know, we could probably just, filter into that group and not be noticed i was thinking the same thing we should kind of maybe put, just go down to t-shirts or uh, at least roll our sleeves up and look a little bit like we belong here i think um, we should go around and look for susan what what makes you think they won't know that you're strangers 
Oh, I'm sure that they'll know that we're strangers, Peter. I'm not saying that we're going to accept and a plus few we're, I'm saying we're standing we here with Daniel. In. We just blend in with them. But standing over here all to the side, watching them, that's yeah, going to make them more them uncomfortable. To, we're waiting for them to finish. We just arrived. I'm sure they saw our cars drive. And plus, they've already met Daniel. We're standing here with Daniel. So they're going to know we're here with Daniel, which is Susan's father. So these, these assuming sort of, they're not, yeah. These sort I guess of only the things long... don't last more than a couple of minutes anyway. I think only the priest should know who Daniel is. I don't think the rest of the congregation should, would be known. Well, when he was here before, so they would have met him. He made a fuss of trying to get her to come with him. So they would have seen him and heard of it. I'm sure for 30 people, that's not a big group. <sighs> I'm also, sure that's I, nothing. I'm sure she's probably just here somewhere. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. Weird. This is weird, but yeah, it's weird or it's very weird. I actually I also I also, want to um, point out that the I, only person who came back from the retreat that we know about was Benjamin Garner, who was crushed out on Susan. So he got left behind. Weird, sick, also tan, and everyone else went back. So I'm not sure that I trust the pastor with regard to his intentions and Susan. Oh, well, what what do you think? I think the more question, important question to ask is, why do you think it's warm? Is this that that thermal stuff, the volcano stuff that they talk about? It could be the ground. It could be some strange, the shape of the the valley or something. But. Uh... Sorry. It's just it's one of those weird things. It can't Whatever. be something that's always this way, or we'd all know about it. It must be some freak event. Maybe this is that line of a hurricane. What are you going to say, Audi? Well, forget about the land and the ground and the thermal. It's supposed to be nighttime. It's evening. Mm -hmm. yeah, the sun should be a lot lower, but maybe there's a lens in the atmosphere. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. It's just weird. Um, I ask Daniel, I say, um, Hey, uh, Danny, I, uh, do you know which one of these cabins um, Susan's meant to be in? He says, no, I, I don't. When, when I was here, you know, she was here with, with them, with, with the pastor over there. I, I, don't, I don't know where she was staying. She, you know, look, I, she basically, you know, told me to leave. She didn't want me here, which is, was really concerning because that is not like Susan at all. Mm, mm. So you guys are standing around for, you've probably been standing there for about five minutes now. Um, the parishioners have not moved. They're all just standing there with their eyes closed. Um, There's no chanting or anything. They're just standing in a circle, yep. sweating, yep. quietly yep. praying, motionless. Yep. I want to move closer and see if I can find out what this guy is holding. It's probably just a Bible. Or a cross. But, okay. Um, as you do that, uh, so yeah, you start moving over. Uh, some of you, um, you know, as uh, Robert starts moving over, uh, you do notice that there is somebody moving around in the office, uh, in the cabin office. Um, I'd like somebody to go talk to the guy in the office. I'd like to, uh, I'll go to case the cabins on the yeah, side. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Mason and uh, yeah. have a look at the cabins. But you go talk to the guy in the office. Okay, I'll go talk to the, uh, I'll go talk to the guys in the office. Yeah, uh, Odie and Peter, what are you guys going to do? I'm going to watch Robert, but from a distance, and see if anybody's looking at him. I'm going to watch his back, but keeping my own distance. So I, I'm just going to walk it together. There's two, there's two things I'm looking for. I want to see if he's holding – I'm assuming it's a Bible or a cross, but I want to see if it's a box of some kind or something like that, and I want to look at these people that are in this group. Do any of them have symptoms – of whatever, be it drugs or an illness or whatever, do any of these people look like they are under the weather like the boy that we met in town was like? Okay. Um, so, uh, Robert, give me a – we'll start with you first. Give me a uh, spot hidden roll and, and tell me I, how well you do. And I'm, I'm just waiting. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> 85 of 75, so – so you, you kind of start walking over towards the pastor um, and you, I would, let's say you get about 10 feet away from him. You're, I'm, you're not making it very obvious uh, that you are, uh, you know, trying to get right up to him, I'm assuming. Uh, and you look and you, you can't really tell what he's holding, uh, 
Um, it doesn't look like, it's definitely not a Bible. It's something that fits within the palm of his hand, uh, but only like just barely. Uh, and you, you catch glimpses of um, like light reflecting off of it, like, sh like shining off of it. Not, not, not that the thing he's, he's holding is like, it has some type of illumination from within, but. Um, like, uh, like, like something cold. Like a gem. <clears throat> like a gem or gold. You, you can't quite tell what it is. A miniature uh, disco ball. Is yeah. is there a chain? No, there's not. Uh, you and you you look at all the others. Um, I, I won't even make you roll for that. You you don't see none of them look like they're sick. Um, in fact, you know, you 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 you're kind of looking for this. They they all have uh, a nice tan. Um, some a little bit deeper than others, um, and uh, all of them seem to be you know. Uh, just just fine uh, and perfectly normal so maybe it's not drugs you know? <clears throat> we'll see um, so uh butch you uh is anybody i'm sorry is anybody going with butch uh, my intention is to pretend to be uh someone who's visiting i don't want to uh, be like an outsider i want to come in as though i'm a tourist and i'm gonna ask for a room if, okay. if i if i see if i see butch walking off by himself towards the office i'll go ahead and catch up to him okay yeah, and if you're going to the office while we check the cabins out, maybe keep the guy in the office occupied. Yeah, that's my intention. I want to, I want to talk to him as long as possible, but I want to pretend to be a tourist. I don't want to go ask questions right out of the bat. I yeah. like that. Which is, which is really weird, isn't it? So you, you walk in uh, to the cabin, and the, the office cabin, it really just looks like it's a, you know, like every other one of the cabins. And, and all the cabins look the same. They're like small 10 by 10 shacks that have screen doors and windows. Um, you, you walk into the office, you see like this little desk in there, uh, and standing behind it is this man, uh, probably in his late 50s, graying hair. Uh, he sees you walk in and goes, oh, hello, uh, welcome to the Sunshine Cottages. Uh, can, can, I, can I help you with anything? Uh, just one second. Does he also have a tan or anything noticeable? Yes, he does. Okay. Uh, what time is it? I've been driving here for hours. Oh, uh, I, honestly, I, I don't know. Um, I, you know what? You know, with uh, all the uh, this lovely weather that we're having, you know, kind of just you know don't keep track of the time and you know we've been enjoying it gary evans is my name by the way i run the place oh. here oh hi gary i'm butch butch sawyer butch, nice i'm glad i you. finally came here my wife's been nagging me to come here and take a break for years but i've never made the trip he so, goes yeah. out your your wife and, and looks at peter uh not me <laughs> oh okay, okay. I got you. I got you. Just, no, I mean, it wouldn't be a vacation if my wife was here. You know what I'm saying? I, I got you. I, I see what you're saying. Well, you know what? You are. You have come to, uh, you know, the perfect place. You know, this late in the season, we usually don't have this many people. Unfortunately, we're out of cabins. Mm. Um, yeah. I, if you want, I could I could rent you some uh, space to uh, if you could find some tents or something. Well, is there is there any place else in town? Uh, you know what? I heard that uh, the Golden Nest Hotel ha may have a room or two open. All right. Do you have a phone? Maybe we can phone over there. And... Uh, sorry, I, I don't. There's no phone lines here. Well, it's just down the road, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And he gives you directions. It's basically just down the road. You make a right and, you know, go up a hill and, and you're there. He yeah. says it's a really great place. Uh, they have uh, a, a natural spa behind it in the woods. It's really, really nice uh, kind of like bed and breakfast. Well, that sounds nice. Okay, so how long has the weather been like this here? Oh, it, it's been like this for, I, I, I honestly, and he kind of pauses for a second and looks outside as if he's just kind of, you know, looking, you know, off in the distance and kind of snaps back. He goes, I, I don't know, honestly. Um, you know, like I said, this is just a, a lucky break. And, you know, we usually don't have this many guests in January. It's uh, such a, you know, nice time outside. You know, we're just, you know, thankful for it being uh, such a, a nice uh, a nice time and getting, you know, extra people here. Yeah. Is it always is, like this during is, January? No, no. Usually we, we've got, you know, a foot of snow on the ground. So it's just an unusual weather this time. Of, this. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. 
Um, well, anyway, this place looks great. So, uh, both of you give me idea rolls. Oh no, ninety-eight. I don't have any ideas. Oh, I failed to. <laughs> okay. So yeah, he starts talking a little bit more and says, you know, look, you know, we've we've had some really bad storms come through here. You should have been here in uh, uh, 1912. I mean, there was a huge uh, nor'easter that came through here, just, you know, three or four feet of snow. And he starts going on and on, and you don't kind of see so him. So you've lived here for quite a long time, then, huh? Oh yeah, I've lived here for years and years, way back. Uh, you know, my family's lived around here since, oh, this was a mining town. So it's, uh, uh, there's been, you know, never had anything like this, any, any weather like that. So this is really unusual. That's, that's interesting. Well, where is the mine now? Are there any uh, mines still open? No, no. He says, yeah, if you, if you had, uh, you know, up the roads and kind of waves his hand towards, uh, the north, um, that you know back way back in the woods you, you may find you know some of the old mines there but they're all abandoned nobody ever uh the mines kind of gave out uh in the late 1890s oh uh, well so i'm gonna level with you my niece uh susan is over here and uh so i need to meet her so if you could just tell me what room she is in that'd be great Oh, I, Susan, I, I don't know of any Susan. Um, Peterson's the last the name. Out there? Yeah. Oh. Um, Susan Peterson? Uh, no, I'm sorry. You know, you, you'd probably have to talk to Pastor Thompson. He's the, he's the one who kind of just rented all the cabins. I see. Uh, I really don't know I, any of the, the people out there. Oh, yeah, but actually with uh, – uh, we are actually with the pastor. We have the new ones in the congregation. He just and, seems to be uh, praying out there, so we haven't had the chance to talk to him yet. Oh, um, did you guys uh, did you come late? Well, we had a car, kind of a car accident on the way up. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Oh, so. uh, well, you know, I mean, just talk to Pastor Thompson. He'll be able to set you up with whatever cabin or, you know, if – if for some reason, you know, he didn't think you were coming or anything like that, you know, just go over to the Golden Nest Hotel. They'll be able to set you up, I'm sure. Right. Okay, I'm actually a bit hungry. Do you have anything to eat? Uh, no, we don't. But you know what? The Bell and Whistle Cafe, they have some of the best food in town. And in fact, here, he kind of reaches over and he hands you a uh, place map that is and hands it to you and says, you know, right here, this is our town. You, you can see everything on it. And he shows you the same map that, that I uh, had sent you. And he kind of flips it over. And, and on the back is the uh, Bell and Whistle Cafe menu. Uh, he says, you know, they have got some of the, the best food, uh, sandwiches, breakfast, pies, uh, every, anything you could want. Okay. Just to, right. so you tell Bob Crenshaw to, that I sent you over there, and he'll give you a good discount. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I'm thank sorry, you. what was your name? Uh, Gary Evans. All right. Thanks, Gary. All right. So, so while you guys are doing that, uh, the rest of uh, those who have decided to go into the uh, kind of look through the cabins, um, how, are, how are you doing that? Where are you going? Uh, so <clears throat> you said the office cabin was pretty much like the others. Yes. And you said that we could see somebody through a window. Yeah. How there's, many, there's, how many windows does a cabin have generally? Uh, it's got uh, one on the front. So I think uh, the front is where the door is. There's like a little porch. Uh, there's a window to the right of it. And then each wall has two windows on it. Um, and is there any of the cabins that look like they might be the priests? Not that you can tell from the outside. Okay. And so they're roughly a square or with yeah. slight rectangles? Yeah, square, probably about 10 by 10. So a couple windows on each side. Yep. So I'm going to yeah. go, I, my, I guess we should discuss it. Well, I think, I, uh, let's maybe try and get away as far away from the congregation as we can get, you know, get out of sight a little bit. Maybe the, the last cabin down the side. I think they're, are they kind of in a circle? The cabins too? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, horseshoe. Yeah. They're in a horseshoe shape. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you. We should move to that and look for any shrubbery and just start maybe in the middle away from them and go either together if it's interesting, if it's boring or 
no, together if it's interesting and opposite if it's boring. Mm, yeah. And see whether they're like occupied, what they're occupied with. Yeah. Okay. All so, right. yeah, you, you go to the first one. I mean, you can, you can very uh, quickly tell that um, none of the cabins are occupied at this time. Okay. Do okay. they picking in the windows? Are there two beds each, four beds each, cots? So you see, uh, some have two beds, some have two bunk beds uh, in them. Uh, you in, in each one that you kind of glance into, there is a uh, like a little table. Uh, a little uh, dresser uh, in there as well. Um, but you also see, you know, on the beds, the beds are unmade. There's um, kind of like, you know, clothes and, and uh, bags just kind of thrown everywhere. So there's signs of human individuality and, yeah. and recent occupancy. Uh, I don't think there's any way that we would recognize something of Susan's. I don't know of any... I mean, we run back to Daniel and ask if she had a teddy bear or something, but I don't know if we're going to get anywhere like that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also looking for, for signs of, the, of this priest guy. I, I don't trust him. Um, well, I don't trust priests anyway. That's just my nature. But, well, uh, yeah, and he's probably staying in a cabin by himself. Yeah, that's right? why I'm, I'm looking for signs of, of elders. elders. All right. Yeah, so I mean, he's, convinced, he's convinced a bunch of these kids to come with him. Yeah. You know. I'll give the old whistle that I can't do. Uh, if I see anything interesting, I'll go clockwise, you go counterclockwise? Does that work? Sounds good, sounds good, yeah, yeah. All right, so everybody who's uh, kind of looking around the cabins, give me spot hidden rules. Okay. I think it's just us two. <clears throat> that was less successful than my last one. Um, I got a, a failure. 60 pass, so I just got a regular pass. Okay, so you, um, Mason, you're kind of looking around. You you really just don't see anything that would be in the ones that you look at. There's nothing that seemed indicative of you know that you can tell that you know a priest, the the, the pastor would be staying in any of them. Uh, Oscar, you kind of go through, uh, look through one or two, uh, just looking in the windows. Don't see anything. When you get to the third one, though, you do kind of get to one where. Um, it's uh, a two bed cabin. Uh, there's, it's kind of closed, uh, kind of thrown all over the place. Although on one bed, you do see a Bible and you do see a uh, overcoat, uh, like suit coat that would match the uh, pants that uh, the pastor is wearing. Okay, so I um, get to that one and I, I go over and make the, the whistle to, to beckon Mason over to where I am. Okay. Um, and I, uh, hey, Mason, I think I, think I might have found where the, where the priest is... Uh, uh, shacking up uh, that you see that jacket on the bed that he overcoat it looks like the same kind of fabric and color as the suit he's wearing out there and plus there's a bible on the bed uh, for uh, in general sorry in general have there been a lot of bibles in these rooms or just like small appurtenances I mean you saw like maybe one or two um, okay. and is there any sign of like a stash of winter clothing like just so they could have traveled? Is so there a room full of fur coats? No, you don't see anything like that. Although you, you do notice in, in one of them, it looks like whoever the occupants were just kind of took all their winter clothes and just threw them in the corner. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm uh, up for jimming a window or, or keeping uh, an eye out while you do. Um, is, the, is the window locked? Uh, it's a screen window. Okay, so yeah, I'll just, um, I'll jimmy the window open. Um, you want to go in? It, yeah, I'll go in. Go in. I'll keep an eye. Okay. Um, do you want me to do a roll of some kind? Yeah, give me a dexterity roll. Okay. Um, I got exactly on my dex. I got an 80. So you... Uh, kind of uh, pull the, the screen off. It really doesn't take you much to get the screen off. And then you kind of climb up over. The, the window itself is probably at your chest height is where the bottom of the window is. Um, mm. So you kind of have to pull yourself up and uh, you, you, you make it in, although you, know, you kind of fall to the ground as you come go in, um, landing on like a table that was right there. Um, Mason, you can hear this just uh, you know, huge amount of noise as uh, Oscar does this. Um, 
And, you know, immediately you look towards uh, the, uh, the congregation to see if anybody, you know, has started to notice or, or head over there. And they're all just completely still concentrating, eyes closed, hands together. Pastor included. Pastor included. Hand slightly reflective. Okay. Easy lookout. Um, so, Oscar, what do you, what do you want to look for? Um, I'm just going to look through like if he's got a bag or something or actually I'm going to, you know, go through the Bible and check and see if he's got anything in the pages, check the pockets of the coat, the whole nine yards. So you uh, kind of flick the Bible open, uh, start going through the pages. Uh, a piece of paper falls out. Um, turns out it's the sales receipt for the, the cabins, uh, all the rentals uh, where they uh, rented uh, 10 cabins. Okay. Uh, you, uh, he's got a bag in there. You know, you quickly start, you know, rifling through it. I, I won't make you, you roll or anything, but all you find is, is clothes and uh, kind of toiletries and stuff that you would uh, expect. You know, all the clothes uh, seem to be um, uh, some more summer clothes than, than winter. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're not seeing anything that. Uh, Psst. Not uh, does he have? Uh, does he have a? Does he have a strong box? <clears throat> Uh, and B, does it seem like this is occupied by one person or two? Uh, is there any sign of anybody else? It actually looks like there may be more than uh, two people just because uh, you see, you know, you have the two beds in there and then you see a sleeping bag on the floor. Um, okay. But you hey. don't find anything like a strong box. Is there anything like female clothing in there? <laughs> Do I find anything like female I'm just checking the whole room. I'm like looking under the beds. And I'm whispering through the window yeah. at you and looking mm. around. At no, you, you don't see that at all. Is there other rooms in the, or is it just like literally it's just a one room cabin? Yeah. It's all okay. It's just a one room cabin. Have we noticed okay. where the latrines are? I mean, yeah, I assume so there's just a bank. The, the, there's uh, two or three outhouses uh, back be, uh, behind all the cabins. So it uh, smells nice while I'm watching from the back. A uh, yeah, you, know, you look. It, you can now that you you think about it, you can kind of start smelling it. it. The smell seems a little more overpowered than than it should be. Almost like the outhouses haven't been uh, changed uh, or emptied in a while. Yeah, right. People around here don't seem to have a very good sense of time. A hey, uh, Mason, uh, look, I, I, I'm giving. I'm basically yeah. ransacking this place. So I can't find anything in here, yeah, man. Climb out before somebody comes back and embarrasses yeah. us. Okay, I, I climb out the the uh, climb out the window again. Okay, uh, by 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 the time you do that, uh, by this time, uh, Butch and Peter, you're exiting the office. Uh, Robert uh, and Odie, I, Odie, you were just staying back in the field, right? Yeah, I was trying to see if anybody was eyeballing James while he was walking around, and then I wanted to just take a closer look, see if I could maybe detect what the priest has in his hand, or if there's any um, anything. I know this whole thing is out of the ordinary, but anything that really stands out to me. Yeah, so nobody bats an eye. In fact, nobody opens their eyes uh, the whole time that they're doing this. Uh, Daniel Peterson is standing next to you, and you can tell that he's getting very anxious um, he, he's getting very antsy. Um, it's, uh, he, you're looking around and he's looking around and Susan isn't here. And every once in a while I was like, Hey, we gotta go. We gotta go find her. Um, well, not and, just him, but the other people in, around, there's more people than just the prayer group, correct? There's people. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm also observing them. Yep. To see them. Yeah. You, you haven't seen, seen her at all. Okay. Uh, as, as you're looking at the pastor, you know, you're standing there for a while. So, you know, you, you can get, you, you start looking and um, you, you do kind of get an idea that almost like he's holding some type of stone in, in his hand, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a little bit smaller than an egg. Uh, okay. but, but that's really all you can tell. And every once in a while, you do see some, some light glint off of it uh, in the, from the sunlight. Uh, but um, you, other than that, you can't really tell too much. Okay. How, how well do we know Daniel? I mean, you, you, all of you know him, you know, varying degrees. Uh, is there something specific that you want to? Yeah. Is Daniel Catholic? Um, sure. Yes, he's Catholic. Well, okay. 
Because uh, well, I have let, a specific let question. Back. Let me take that back because that wouldn't make sense if his daughter was going to a Presbyterian church then. Well, well she said that she was joining the church, so. That's true. So we'll say that she's um, non-denominational. All right. Well, I'm curious. According to the map, there is a place on here, here called the Lady of Loreto. Some kind of shrine. And it just seems to me that now you've got the Presbyterians moving in that, you know, they might have some kind of celebration going on over there. Well, remember, you guys don't have the map yet. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, if you want, Butch and I have. Uh, Gary gives you a, a, a number of copies. Um, yeah, I just haven't given them out to these guys. Yeah, so you, well, you have this as your Yeah, it's a good question. I'm just curious as to, you know, I mean, there's got to be something that we know about this town. I mean, yes, it's a vacation resort, but I would think that, you know, look, when you call something, you know, the Lady of Lorento, you're talking a shrine like Lords or something, which means that it's going to be quite popular. People are going to know about it. Well, looking at the map, you see that it's actually Our Lady of Loreto, which is a typical Catholic name of a church. Okay. Can I roll to see if I see Mason on Oscar scooting out of a window in one of the cabins? I'd, yeah, I'd like to try to reconvene, but I, we didn't share the special whistle I can't do with everybody. But it seems like we could maybe pool our uh, new information. Right, just yeah, it, to, to Odie and Robert. To, to get out of, uh, out of there and uh, kind of meet back up, unless anybody wants to run off and, and do something. Well, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Do, do, Odie, do Odie and Robert have something else? Yeah, I would like to have an alibi for all this good shenanigans. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, that was it. We're just going to, you know, kind of look around these this congregation. I take it they're all in some kind of a trance. Yeah, I as mean, we walk back. We're we, praying pretty hard. Um, as, as we walk back, we're like, we say to Robert or Odie, we're like, are they they still at it? Yeah. Well, it, I mean, there's sometimes a moment of silence, but... Just reach out and slightly, not hard, slightly nudge someone like I was moving past them and accidentally nudged them. Well, do why don't come... just go up and tap the pastor on the shoulder? Do they come to, or are they still mumbo and jumboing? Well, I mean, are, are you doing that? Yeah. Yeah, I'll walk up and tap, tap the pastor on the shoulder. Um, so I you, think we should uh, take the pastor around the corner and, you know, have a good old talk with him. Oh, oh good time. It's the pastor. You guys, so, you guys so, like there's something weird going on. So, so Peter, you, you're going to go and you're going to kind of tap somebody on the shoulder and, and Robert, you're going to try to do the same thing to the pastor? Yeah. All the way around. <laughs> yeah, just whatever. Just, you know, get somebody's attention to see if they come out of this trance. Okay. So. Uh, so are you, so Robert, pastor. are you doing it to the pastor or are you doing it to just somebody else? The pastor. I'm tapping him on the shoulder. Okay. Uh, all right. I got it. So, uh, and Robert, you're doing the same, but just to somebody else. Yeah. Okay. But so, I'm watching, I'm watching everybody because I'm curious is if he's going to tap the pastor on the shoulder, if the entire congregation comes back too. All right. So you, uh, you, you both kind of do it at the same time. Uh, you know, Peter, you kind of wander around and, and Robert, you go and uh, how, how are you doing this? Are you just going to like put your hand on his shoulder? Or are you going to like, you know, tap oh. him? Oh, pardon me. No. <laughs> just just, just I, I, nudge him. Like my, I was... my, yeah. Uh, my plan is to just put my hand on his shoulder and tap. And if, if he's, I assume he'll turn and look at me and I'll say, I'm very sorry to interrupt you, but we're looking for someone. Okay, so uh, Peter, you uh, you do that to the pastor. You, you put your hand on his shoulder to kind of you know nudge him, and as soon as you do, you feel this warmth uh, start going through all your body. This wonderful warmth, uh, and it, it it just feels uh, you you can't really explain it. It feels really just amazing and, and you just feel very relaxed and you can feel the sun coming down on you and it just feels wonderful and, and Robert the the same thing happens to you when when you kind of you know nudge somebody who's in the circle you, you you put your hand on on them and uh you know for for the brief moments that you both have your hands on you know th these people you you feel just this warmth start caressing through your body um and 
you know, as soon as you take your hand off, um, it, it stops. Uh, you still feel the warmth from the sun, but that kind of almost euphoric feeling that you were starting to feel goes away. Okay. I pull away though quickly. Do they have any, does he have any reaction? Um, he, uh, he, the, the pastor kind of uh, opens his eyes and, and looks towards you and, and smiles and uh, says, oh, please join our circle if you'd like. And then uh, turns uh, back and kind of closes his eyes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we're looking for someone. Does he respond? It's like, I apologize. He, yeah, he opens his eyes again and goes, I apologize. We're, we're in the middle of our worship, uh, which will be completed at the day's end. If you would like to come back then, uh, we would be more than happy to answer any of your questions. And then turns back around and... Did all of them break contact? Nope. No, okay. none of them. In, it was only the pastor who was doing I that. had no idea what I was looking for anyway. <laughs> no clue. I just was curious. Well, I, uh, I, I sort Robert, of when you, when you do that, you know, somebody does open their eyes and kind of smiles at you and um, kind of lets go with their hand to the next person and, and offers their hand to you. Oh, I'll shake their hand. And as soon as you touch their hand again, I mean, they're, they're, they're holding it again like they want you to join into the circle. Not that my, my big five times size hand. <laughs> they're just, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, I, it, when, if you uh, grab it again, you, you feel that, you know, warmth, um, you know, start going through your body uh, again. Um, uh, give me a, um, give me a spot hidden too. You know, at this point, I look at all, all of them holding him. hands and uh, right. I get curious and I go try and bear hug someone. Hey, can, can I use a luck? I, I, I missed it by one. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right. I'll, I'll use a luck. So you... When you grab the, the person's hand and you feel this warmth start going through you, um, the, the, the stone that the pastor is holding, you can kind of see that it, it doesn't start to glow, but it, it, the, the light shining off of it gets a little bit brighter. And it, it's, not a, um, it's not a blinding brightness, but it's, a very, it, it's very hard for you to explain, but it, it's very comforting uh, that you know, the light coming from this. It's like this almost like golden shimmery light. Uh, I have an uh, obs I have a question. Yes. Uh, I try to hold people to see if I, because I see those people reacting differently when they touch a few people. So I try bear hugging someone. What happens to me? Well, I mean, are you, how, I, so describe to me how you're, you're going to do this. Cause yeah, I'm going to just go uh, grab a, a guy by the shoulder. Just going to go try and bear hug him. Um, you, uh, you go and you do that and you feel the same thing that everybody else, uh, did. Um, okay. it's a little bit more intense for you because you are, um, you know, kind of holding on to somebody, but it only lasts for a second because the person just kind of, you know, lets out a, you know, startled, uh, yelp and, you know, kind of goes like this, steps forward, turns around. And at this point, the, the pastor looks at, uh, opens his eyes, kind of drops his hand. And at this point, everybody drops their hands and kind of open their eyes, looking, I don't want to say dazed, but um, uh, they're, they're kind of surprised. Uh, and the pastor uh, looks over at uh, Butch and then looks over at Peter and says, I'm sorry, we are worshiping. Please leave. I'm sorry. I thought he was my friend, Michael. Guys, let's, let's go. Let's go find a place in town to stay. As you as you say that, Daniel goes. Wait a minute! What we can't leave? He's got to know where Susan is. Where is Susan? And he starts you know, angrily walking towards the pastor. I want to grab him, put my hand on him, whatever I need to. Not like forcefully, but listen. We know what we're doing. You contacted us for a reason. Trust me, please. Is kinda... the, yeah, is the pastor still connected, or is he is he looking at us? He's no, he's looking at you. And, okay. and in fact, yeah, at this point, everybody is, you know, kind of looking at all of you. Not that they're, you know, it's not, you know, like they're about to attack you or anything like that, but right. you're getting some pretty annoyed looks from everybody. I say, we're very sorry to have interrupted you, but now that we have, can you tell us where Susan Peterson is? He's like, you know, I'm sorry. We are, are worshiping. Uh, he kind of starts looking around. Um, give me a uh, persuade or a fast talk roll, whichever one is higher for you. Uh, what is my persuade? My persuade's really low. Fast talk. It's fast talk. That's even lower. <laughs> no, I didn't pass. 
He says, I, I'm sorry, she's not here. I don't know where she went. You will have to, you know, go find her. We are in the middle of worship. Please let us worship. And with that, um, he kind of, you know, hold, holds out his okay. hand and everybody joins hands. Before together. he can do that, before I, he can do that, I want to step forward. Um, and I look at the priest. I'm step, stepped up next to Peter. And I just, I look at him and I say, don't ask, let, don't let us ask twice because you won't like what happens next. He says, look, I don't know where she is. She has left. She's worshiping a false God and has left the church never to return to us. If you want to find her, go look around town. That is all we know. If we find out you've lied to us, and I just walk away. And he basically just, you know, you, you've tried to intimidate people before. And I mean, you've successfully intimidated people before, and that usually works. He just kind of closes his eyes uh, and grabs somebody's hand and everybody in, in the circle does the same. Cool. He well, got the message. Let's, let's go find a place in town. Maybe we'll check some of the other churches. I say to Robert, I'm like, maybe she's decided to come home. Hopefully she's not halfway home already, and and we're here for nothing. You know, I think we should check the Lady of Loret. That seems like a peculiar place. It's just I get in the, I, I yeah, get in the back like seat church. of Peter's car and just lie in the back. <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> you know or, what? I think we should go get some... Uh, clothes from robin's nest it says right here we can get a couple of clothes there so i think we should you all get some map somewhere clothes. yeah we got this map from oh yeah yeah, oh, we, a couple we met of them here. yeah. as the only person who didn't just make an obscenity of himself in front of this religious community i'm a little behind <laughs> oh this is cute uh, three little pine trees let's uh let's Very go cute. to the let's get something to eat yeah, let's let's grab uh, something cool to drink and discuss this. Yeah, yeah, let's get a nice afternoon egg cream in the middle of a blizzard in the northeast. Good idea, Mason. So here's uh, the where... thing. Uh, well, we're going to go to the Bell and Wessel Cafe. That's just okay. down the road, um, yep. guys. The 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 guy who runs this place, uh, a Mister uh, Crenshaw. Crenshaw. Um, that's what his name was. Yep. Um, uh, he says this is a weird thing. This is weird, unusual weather. So I, I doubt that they're selling clothes for the summer. They're probably still selling winter clothes. It's just a freak that's happening. Now, uh, in the town around us, while, while we're engaged in these shenanigans, it's just the same thing. We can hear hoots and hollers, people splashing on the beach down by the lake there's couples holding hands with ice cream is that what's going on yeah the i mean you, so, so as you as you drive uh, away from the, the cottages you know you go over a bridge which the red river is uh feeds into uh the lake uh and you start you know going past uh some stores and um along the lake is a little boardwalk uh, and then that leads to the beach. And I mean, you see a lot of couples just sitting there either at, um, on uh, benches, just kind of holding hands or, you know, sipping iced tea or drinking water on the beach is just full of people. Um, you just by looking at the amount of people that are just kind of walking through town um, and uh, are on the beach, you, you can tell, and, and even just all the cars that are just parked everywhere you can tell that this isn't just the people who live in town. There, the, there's a lot of people uh, in this small town that are enjoying the weather. People have come up here because it's a weird summer in the middle of winter. I'll tell you one of the weird things is that the lake isn't frozen. If, if this just happened and it's kind of a freak, then how did that lake get unfrozen? That and remember, a month. Benjamin came back from the treat early with a tan and that was weeks ago something's weird going on. i don't think anybody in this town i'm i'm curious i i think we should be careful not to drink the water maybe we're just gonna have did, did, where was where was daniel here 
Robert, did you fill in? Daniel was there only a couple days before he uh, talked to you guys. Right. But Benjamin Garner went up with them originally for the retreat, and then he yes. came back down with the pastor, and the pastor ditched him to go through withdrawal in his mom's house. But that's what I'm saying. And it's he like doesn't uh, know how long ago that was, but it was a long. It was weeks ago. It was a couple of days. It wasn't that long ago that Susan, she was definitely here, and she was with the priest because Daniel saw her. So right. That's what I'm saying. So she except Daniel doesn't know how long time was either. Everyone in this town doesn't know what time it is. Right, and it doesn't seem to be changing much either. It's it's bizarre. Robert, uh, did you feel anything weird when you touched those people? I sure did. Yeah, I mean, I felt warmth, and you know, yeah, it was well, it's hot, radiant guys. warmth, and people. Yeah, it's really hot. It's like 84 degrees and a little bit humid. This is a no. different kind of warmth. It was. So what are you talking about? Summer desert warmth. It was. It was like an internal warmth. I, I didn't like it at all. Actually, you did like it. That, that was the thing that w was odd. Is that oh. it? It may have been surprising, but you know, it. Anybody who 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 felt that, uh, Robert, Peter, and Butch, it, it it was not an unpleasant feeling. Okay. It's just it's in my in my description. It says that I don't like hot hot warmth. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't uncomfortable hot. So it was just, just pleasant. Yeah. Yeah, very pleasant. <sighs> it was like there was some form of energy passing through me. That would be a good description. Daniel, did you touch anyone when you were here? Did you like hold on to the priest for some time? It's like uh, no, or not that. Part not of the, the congregation at all. You know, just just Susan when I was trying to get her to to go with me, but you know, other than that, uh, I don't think I don't think I did. Daniel, did you, you were confused it? about yeah. your suntan when we asked you about it. Do yeah. you remember if the weather was the same when you were here before? Yeah, it was. You know, look, I I didn't tell you because I didn't think you'd believe me. You'd think right. that you know, I was you know going crazy, but you know. But there's nothing else you haven't told us that you do remember. No, I, you know, at this point, I have told you everything that I know. All I know is that, you know, something weird is going on in this town. My daughter is here somewhere, and we, we need to find her. her. We're going to help you we find her. Find her. We're going to get her out of here. It's not that big of a town. We should be able to find her pretty quickly. Even if we just drive around town for a while and see if we see her walking from one place to another. Do, um, do you have a, oh, sorry. Do you have a photograph of your daughter? Well, we uh, know him, so we've probably seen her a number. Yeah, yeah. we established that we knew what she looks like. We can't show others. Pulls a little to sh away. right. Yeah, to um, show other people. That's why. Quick question around the the group. I don't think we've ever had playing cards and stuff like that. I don't think we've ever had much of a religious discussion. Robert, you're Catholic, aren't you? Uh, somewhat. How about the mm -hmm. rest of you? Do you have any religious affiliations? Nah, I have no religious opinion. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a lapsed Catholic. Any of you brought up Protestant? No? No. Well, I, I just can't for the life of me. I, I'm not, I wasn't brought religious either, but I can't for the life of me understand what that was. And I point back towards the circle of people all standing in a circle quietly worshiping. I, I didn't see any worshiping. I didn't see any hymn singing. I didn't see any swaying or falling down on the ground or shaking or anything like that. So for that and matter, what, they didn't take. Looks the, like a cult is all I have to say. What did he say to you about Susan? He said she's not here. That she's no, worshiping a false, she's worshiping false, false, false god. god. She's yeah, worshiping well, a false god. god. But that, even that's what every Christian group says. Yeah, but even if she went to say the church the catholic church that's still the same god they well, would just say different church i didn't see anything christian about what they were doing is what i'm saying and they left all their all their bibles were left in their rooms i don't well, think they, i don't think Christians they're worshiping walk around holding god, bibles god. in their hand they took the pews from the church but they didn't take the cross from the church which strikes yeah, I don't know what that unusual. is there, but apparently Susan probably had a head on her shoulders and she thought this is a bunch of nonsense and she walked away. Let's hope so. Anyway, <sighs> uh, before we 
drag out this conversation. Given that there are 800 more people in town than there are room for, maybe we should hit the golden nest first and get some rooms. I don't want to sleep in a hot car all night. Yeah, that's a good idea. If there is a night here. Good point. <laughs> it's and too I'm bad. curious, after we get rooms, I'm curious about the ray of light gallery, because there's an awful lot of light around here. The ray yeah. of light gallery. It's probably on this cute got, menu map. It's this kind of a town that's probably got little crafty things that people have made to hang in their windows and, you know, God's eyes and things like that. Anyways. Uh, so we're gonna hit the we're gonna hit the bell and whistle cafe first. I think we're there. Yeah, by this yeah, time, I think you, this conversation was at the bell and whistle mostly. Yeah. So it's and, and for the record, yeah. for the record, the uh, the eyes, the God's eyes, those would be at the eye gal galore gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, so. You, you get to the uh, Bell and Whistle Cafe and you pull up in front of it and there's just cars lining the street. The only place for you to park is uh, this very like narrow alleyway between uh, the Bell and Whistle Cafe and the building next to it. And essentially one car has to pull in and the other car has to pull in behind you it. You know what? If it's that busy at the moment, let's go to the hotel first. Mm. If we can get a room. Well, I mean, you... So... You glance in though, and you really you don't see anybody in there other than you know somebody standing behind the the the, the counter. They're just parking there. They're parking there and there. Okay. Well, you I know what? Walk a couple blocks instead of being blocked in. Cause... Let's let's go go to the hotel, get a room, leave our car there, and just walk back here. It's not that far. I am really sweating in these wool trousers, even yeah. though everything else is gone. But I'm I'm rather walk than uh, than be stuck. I have a really nice white linen suit. I wish I'd have brought it. Had no reason to. It's probably in mothballs. Yeah, until until summer. All right. Hopefully. So you're gonna instead go to the Golden Nest Hotel. We're just gonna go there and park our stuff and then come back. Reconnoiter. All right. Uh, so the the Golden Nest Hotel is. Uh, just up uh, Boardwalk Street, um, you kind of have to backtrack a little bit, and and you get there, and it's a very almost like uh, you kind of imagine that at one point it may have been like a farmhouse or something like that. It's that size. It's uh, got some charm. Yes, it, it, and in front of it is a little sign that says Golden Nest Hotel and Spa, um, and uh, there's uh, you know a couple of spaces that you're able to find uh, to park in there. Uh, and you get out, and um, it's uh, you know there's uh, front steps. Um, assume everybody uh, goes in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I see it's just one block up, so that's cool. <clears throat> so uh, you you go in. Um, there's you walk into like the the entryway of the the house, uh, and there's like a little table there with a bell, uh, and you you really don't see anybody uh, around. Ding. So ding ding uh, ding 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 ding. <laughs> you hit it once, no, nothing. After you hit it a bunch of times, uh, you hear uh, somebody say, "Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming." And this uh, and this old woman, uh, probably in her sixties, comes out um, from from the back uh, down the hallway. It looks like she came in like uh, you hear a back porch door close, so it sounds uh. like she was out on the back. And comes up and says, uh, "Hi, uh, I'm uh, Shirley. Uh, welcome to the." Uh, the Golden Nest Hotel and Spa. Can can I help you? Well, we're hoping that you have a place for us to stay. We probably need about three rooms. Three rooms. Ah, I don't think we have that. You know, we've got, um, we have, well, we have one bedroom uh, available and then um, we have the attic available, which probably isn't as comfortable, but uh, you know, uh, you could probably fit three or four people in there. And she kind of looks at everybody. I'll take the room. I call shotgun on the room as well. I'll take I'll, the I look at Odie and I say, I'm in the attic. I'm in the attic. attic. Yeah. Creepy in attic. this weather, is there anything like a widow's walk or a deck or someplace? Because I could probably sleep comfortably in the evening breeze. Oh, yeah. There's, there's uh, a deck that goes all around the, uh, the hotel. Uh, and she says, oh, yeah, it, you know, that we've got, you know, some benches out back. Uh, 
you, you a hammock and a pillow. Sorry, go on. A hammock and a pillow. Oh yeah, we can we can set up some. I'm sure we have something like that. My husband Frank is around here somewhere. He's probably out back with Priest Cecilia. Uh, she'll uh, he'll when he gets in here um, around dinner time. I'll see if he can if he can get you one of those. Uh, and so, so, oh, so you're interested in in the rooms? Yes, yes, yeah. Mason, so we could fill you up there too. We could help that. Okay. So she um, kind of pulls out some things and starts writing it down. I, I um, forget. I forget. We asked earlier. Do we have a picture of Susan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, while we're here, we're here to meet somebody. Have you seen this girl? She kind of looks at it. She's got glasses on. And looks really close at it and says, "Ah." Doesn't look familiar. Was she, was she staying here? Well, I don't think she was staying here, but she's somewhere in town. We got to find her. Oh, uh, well, there's a lot of people in town right now. Yeah, yeah we're having great weather right now. I don't know if you've noticed. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? It is. I mean, you look around, and you know, for the time of year, I, I can't, I can't imagine, you know, what it is. It, this, what this is like. As she's doing this, she's filling it out, and at one point, she kind of turns around to look at a calendar. Uh, to get the date and start writing it down. Um, everybody uh, give me spot hidden rules. Yeah, what date does she write? 27. That's a hard. Boom. Critical. Five. So for those, for those who succeed, you see that the, the calendar on the back um, is, is kind of hanging on a back wall, and it's one where she kind of marked off the days. And the, she shows that the current date is December 12th. <laughs> <laughs> of the previous year December 12th 27 is uh, there by chance your husband's going to be busy with the priestess yes uh, priest Cecilia is, they're, they're out back uh, we have a natural spa back there uh, you're more than welcome to use it um, is there by chance like a, a clock on the wall a cuckoo clock or a, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. what time is it it's uh, the, what the time it should be so We'll say by this time it's about six p.m. Okay. So and that's what it shows. Okay. So uh, I forget this time of year. When is sunset? When will your husband and Prince Cecilia be done, Priest Cecilia? Oh, the uh, when when worship is done. So uh, usually when the sun sets, uh, when that is. Um, uh, I couldn't really tell you, you know, when that is. Uh, probably in a couple hours, I guess. I, if you're hungry now, you can you can go down to uh, the Bell and Whistle Cafe or even the Evergreen De Delicatessen. They they'll serve you some sandwiches too. We, we were actually going to head down to the Bell and oh, Whistle. Oh, excellent, excellent. Um, uh, you say um, a priestess uh, is some sort of New Age religion or? Oh, I I, I don't. Stuff? know about that uh priest cecilia she she's uh um she came to town a while ago i i guess um and she kind of yeah as she tries to it's almost like she's trying to remember how long ago and just, just can't and then she just okay. continues on and says oh, well uh, and she's uh you know been here at, at, at um, near the hotel uh and you know we just you know all just kind of sit around and um, you know, hold hands and just bask under the sun and, you know, uh, listen uh, to Celia and uh, worship with her. Hmm. Interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll be back later. Um, yeah. I, I sort of look at the others and I say, well, some you know, new age is. Uh... Well, no, it's, it's not new. I mean, have you, have you, are you familiar with Apollo? Oh well, you're talking about the Greek god. We're uh, yeah, we all come the from Greek god of the sun. Yeah. Yes. Who, who is it? Who? Of course, we all know I mean, about that. You know, of course. What, tell me a little more about it. Well, well, Priestess Celia, she's a uh, a priestess of Apollo. I and see. Of course, that, that makes complete sense. Can I make a sanity check for this lady? You mean a psychology roll? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> The other way around. <laughs> Either way, it sounds like new age stuff. Yeah, 43, which is not quite hard. Just a, just a regular success. She is, uh, she seems very sincere. Uh, and she feels, you know, she's very, you know, matter of fact. Matter of fact. Yeah. Is there a place of worship for uh, Priestess Celia? Oh, just, just out back. Um, you know, either in the backyard or sometimes we, we go out to, to the spa. 
Uh, that's where but you we're folks at. had the spa before Celia came to town, right? Oh yeah, the spa has been here. Uh, who knows how long? It's it's a natural spa uh, uh, in in. Is the- it hot springs? Yes, yes. Yeah, but that's not why it's so warm. No, no, and uh, yeah, I dare say that you know e- even now the hot springs almost feels a little bit cool. Uh, you know, going going in it not as cool as the lake, obviously. Sure. Uh, and and you said you you know mostly sit in a circle with priest Cecilia and hold hands and relax commune with Apollo. Is that six of you or eight of you or twenty of you or? Uh, no, there's, there's. If we joined, would be crowded. Oh no, it would never be crowded. Uh, there's there's probably about a, a dozen of us. Uh, do you guys get along well with the the uh, folks who are on the retreat down? down by the cabins? Uh, I'm not familiar with them. There's a are, Pastor are, Thompson are down there. Apollo too? I, I don't know exactly what Pastor Thompson, uh, I don't know exactly what he's worshiping, but it sounds similar. They stand in a circle and they're quiet, communing. Oh, uh, well, you know, there's there's a lot of people in town, I, I know that, uh, have uh, have gotten some of the stones, so that that could be that could be why. The Did she have a stone with her? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. She's she's had a stone for a while. What stones are these? Oh, they're I, I honestly don't know. Uh, they're just you know the stones that you know uh, the stone that Priest Cecilia has is is the one that she uses to worship. I, I know I've seen some others in uh, around town that that have had them as well. Where, where did they get these stones? You know, I don't know. Um, I know that there are a couple of vendors around, some stands around that, that are selling some. Um, if, you wanna, if you want tonight, uh, you could probably ask Priest Cecilia. I'm sure she'd be more than happy to tell you. I think and when you say vendor, you don't mean a storefront, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, just go down by the lake. You'll, you'll, you'll see them. They're, they're just kind of standing around. They've got like some of the – I know somebody has like one of the push carts – um, I think uh, one of the s- uh, stores may have them. I, maybe it was Even the Evergreen Deli. Uh, I don't. I don't think they have them. I. I. I honestly, I, I'm not sure. I, I haven't gone gone looking for them. Are they expensive? Uh, I. I don't know. I, I don't think so. Or else, you know, uh, there wouldn't be you know them around town. Was Was Celia Priestess Celia's the first stone that you saw? Uh. I, I think so. And you've been here, what, your whole life? You were born in town? Oh, yeah. I, I, I've been here. My, my husband and I have been here, wow, at least 40 years. Is this your family's place or Frank's family's place? Or No, no, no. We, we bought it uh, when we moved into town and kind of turned it into the hotel and, you know, have, have been, you know, doing this ever since. Yeah, it looks like a beautiful place to stay, and I'm I'm very grateful for your hospitality. Well, well thank you very much. Do you um do, um to the GM? Does she look like she could have been living here for forty years? Oh yeah. Okay, so there's not magical youth or anything. No, no, she looks sixty, and, and she's not, and she's pretty tan. Oh yeah, in, in yes. fact, everybody that you, as you've been driving through town, everybody you see is is fairly tan. But they're not uh, living. Some are even a, a little getting towards a little bit you know, pink and burnt, but that, that seems to be pretty rare. Are we, are we starting um, to look tan? We've been um, here for like 20 not, minutes. Right? Yeah, not, not really. Yeah, you've only okay. been well, I can feel, you know, I mean, if you're on a beach in the summer, you'll feel, if you, and you're pale like me, you'll feel that in 20 minutes. Yeah, and I'm mm-hmm. very pale. That's burning. That's not tanning. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the sun. Uh, I ask her what's uh, in the Our Lady of Loreto. Is that like another congregation? Oh yes, uh, that's the that's the local Catholic church. Okay, so do they also have a stone or something? I don't know. Yeah, We're asking I, her a lot of questions that she couldn't know the answer to. Let's yeah, do some exploring. Probably move over. Yeah. I think we should go get something to eat now. Yeah. I'm uh, okay. So, are, are we going to leave? Going to go get some? Yeah. yeah. We, let's assume. Can, can we assume we put all of our stuff in our rooms? Yeah. All right. Oh we yeah. Put our stuff away. 
she gives you uh, a key to the room uh, that you have. It's on the second floor. Uh, and she also gives you a key to the attic. And there's uh, some stairs from the second floor that, that reach up into it. And I mean, you go into the attic and the attic is just, you know, imagine being in a, you know, unventilated attic when it's 90 degrees out. A that's barn like, loft. Exactly. That's Dusty exactly. and super hot. I'm yep. not going to survive. And it, and, but there are doors onto the second floor deck. Oh, yes. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and she thought that Frank could accommodate people outside. Yep. Because that seems like a way to not die. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, there are windows in the attic. They, they, they've, uh, there is, are beds up there. So they've obviously used it uh, in the past for that. Probably not but since it's still December. Very stuffy. Right. I open all the windows in the attic to air it all out and stuff before we need to sleep. Well, let's, let's head on over to the bell and whistle. And as we're walking down, I said, gentlemen, you know, something's really bothering me. And it's, we're seeing a lot of people with tans. We've got people with some sort of a stone. And they're obviously circulating some sort of energy that makes you feel all warm inside. All I can think of is radiation. Yeah. And I honestly, I don't know enough about radiation sickness, people exposed to it, but I'm starting to wonder about Benjamin. Mm. If his illness is radiation sickness, I guess we have no way of knowing because none of us are doctors. Yeah, and what is radiation? Uh, radiation, they've been talking about it for a couple of decades now. It's You know, like Mary Curie, you can make things, they're right. growing stones and they give off warmth of some kind, but it also can be poisonous. I mean, sunlight itself is radiation. Right. But You mean like the glowing paint? Yeah, yeah. and also the sun. Like on your watch oh. dial. Yeah. Oh. Except okay. that in high doses it can be poisonous. And who's this Apollo god? Apa, what you call the Sandra? Oh, Apollo. Okay. Apollo. Didn't you didn't you take any Greek mythology or anything? Odi, oh, oh I I took smoking in the boys' room. You know, I dropped out of school in eighth grade. I I, I have a horrible feeling that <clears throat> the religion is not the important thing. It's that they're adapting whatever these stones are to whatever their religion has to has to be. Uh, just in the same way everybody else does with natural things. Lightning strikes the ground, and the Greeks would have said it was Zeus causing it. And everybody says it's their own god causing it to happen. It's all a bunch of nonsense, but... Well, I think we should see if there's any mine we can investigate, because I think these rocks should have come from mine deep down. I'm not that sure I want to investigate any radiation-laden rocks. I just want to find Susan and get the hell out of here. Quite right honestly, now, I'm happiest in the winter. I don't like the hot summer. My only okay, concern right is now, I think we should get some food. That's the first yeah. stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry too. I could go for biscuits and gravy. That sounds good. Uh, and so, by by this time, you get back to the Bell and Whistle Cafe. Uh, you go in uh, to the front door, um, you open the door, a bell rings, and uh, you see a gentleman standing behind the counter kind of wearing the typical, you know, white t-shirt with grease stains all over it and an apron. Uh, he kind of smiles at you and says, have a seat anywhere, and there's nobody else in here. Hmm. And uh, thank you for your hospitality. Uh, Gary Evans said that you'd uh, like to give us a special. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, you know, Gary, are you seeing down at, at the cottages? Yeah. yeah. We were looking oh. for a place there, but we couldn't get one, so we got a place over up the the golden nest. Or she Golden, golden, golden nest. nest. And Peter Oh yeah, and Frank and Shirley's place. Yeah, you'll you'll love it up there. They're great people. They seem really they seem really fantastic. I, I look around, I'm like, this dinner time, shouldn't people be in here eating like Oh, there! Everybody's just enjoying the weather, and as he says, weather. He kind of, you know, stares outside. Uh, you know, the, the the cafe looks uh, out over the lake, 
and he's just kind of staring at the water for a second and loses his train of thought uh, and then goes. Uh, but, yeah, you know, everybody's, you know, usually we'll see more people once the sun goes down. But, but what can I get you? Uh, the menu's at the table. We make some of the best sandwiches around. Cool. We actually Grilled have cheese. your menu already, so. Uh... Oh, great. Grilled cheese and a vanilla milkshake, please. All right. I'll have a meatball sandwich. Okay. I'll have, have a meatball steak. sandwich as well. Yeah, we'll yeah, see yeah, if they're yeah. as good as Maestro's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Just and he takes everybody's order. Uh, he says, "All right, just give me give me a couple minutes, and I'll uh, I'll have everything out to you." Uh, he kind of turns around and, and walks back into the kitchen. This is a damn peculiar place. You know, I'm trying to look around to see if there are any photos on the wall because usually these cafes should have photos of the town. So I'm trying to see if there's anything special, like. Is it snowing in the photos? Uh, you see, so there are a number of different photos uh, hanging around the room. Some of them are of, uh, or mo all of them are of the town, uh, and they all have dates on in the corner, like you know, eighteen eighty, all the way up through you know, a couple years ago. Um, and they're taken in various times of uh, the year, and you do see some where there's snow on the ground. Okay. Uh, is the snow on the ground, is, do the dates correspond to winter? Or are there any summer photos yep. is what I'm asking. Yep. Oh, yeah. There's there's summer and, and uh, winter photos. Both of them okay. kind of correspond to what you would expect. Is there a calendar behind the counter that we can see? There is a calendar. Is it also set on December 12th? No, it's, it's set to uh, January. Um, but... Oh. Which is still not current. No, but that makes me even more distressed. What if these people are slowly losing their brain capacity because of the radiation that I talked about? Okay, okay, I get that. And I get the fact that they don't seem to know where they are temporarily. But how does that explain the sunlight outside? I don't know about that, but something... Something is I think screwed. something's happening to us as well. I hope it's not going to happen to us. I think it's in the water, maybe the lake water or the well water. No, it's in the stones. And with that, uh, Bob Crenshaw comes out holding a, a tray of drinks, uh, sets it down in front of you, and then it puts a water in front of each of you. He kind of says, "I'm you're working on your food. I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll get it." And he kind of stares out the window. I say, "Hey, Bob." Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Mm. It's it's not always the most polite thing to ask, but you got anything stronger than water? I'm gonna ask the uh, same thing. You you know I I do. I'm gonna have to uh, kind of, I'm gonna have to look around for it in in the back. Uh, if, you, if you give me a couple minutes, uh, cool. yeah. Let, let me let me get the food and then I'll uh, I'll, I'll go and find that. Thank you very uh, much. Great weather That's on, great. isn't it? Yeah, it's Look beautiful. The, beautiful day. Uh, Peter, you yeah. should bring that photograph out too when you get a chance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll ask him when he comes back. Yeah. I think that, I think that if he's got some, it'll be safer than uh, water. Yeah. If there's germs or something in it that's, that's making these people all hallucinate or lose their brains. I don't know whether radiation, I don't know how that goes with soda pop, but I think it's probably safer. Or, well, I wasn't talking about soda pop. No, I wasn't. <laughs> soda pop. I mean, it is, we are talking about soda pop. See, I'm not so sure about soda pop either. Well, at least it's in a closed can or jar or bottle. No, probably not. Nope. Probably fountain. No, water. it's probably off a bathtub or something. Well, nope. if it was a fountain, the he stone. didn't have a fountain out here. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would imagine the soda would be out of a fountain at this time of the... Yeah, I don't well, think unless he's got bottles. bottles. Oh. No, bottles came out in like 18 something. Yeah, but only Coke, kind of. Yeah. Like well, everything was fountain until. I, have, I don't know if he had grape knee high yet, but. <laughs> mm, grape knee high. the wrong area for that. Um, after about 10 minutes, he comes out with everybody's food, uh, kind of sets it down in front of you. It smells delicious. Uh, it looks wonderful. There's not, you know, it. Looks like it's supposed to. I uh, says, you know, give me a minute and let me see if I can uh, go find that other thing. And with that, he kind of turns around and, and walks back. You know, I hate, hate to be the buzzkill here, but if you think that it's in the water, 
then wouldn't that by default put it in the food as well? Well, and Except this is what I was thinking. Cooked. Where did any of this, how did this food get here? We could barely drive here from Evergreen. I didn't well, see might, arms. If, if, they're, if they're this isolated, they might have stores of food to get them through the winter. I don't see anybody else eating. Yeah, yeah. and what about fresh food? I mean, how do you get bread? I didn't see any bakery on that map. And where do they get the grain? And where do they get, and I don't see where I get anything. How do you get the cheese for a Reuben? When it's, you're surrounded by mountains that are blizzarded out. But again, since there's no time here, I mean, are we going to drive down the hill and be in 1924? I, I hope not. Well, I don't know. That was kind of a good year for me. Um, uh, Robert, I guess to answer your question is that we're, we're talking about germs. So if there's germs in the food, then they've been cooked. Well, I thought you were talking about radiation. Well, no, we, I was also assuming that there was something in the water, which might be germs. Uh, I'm eating. So I'm I was going for alcohol because alcohol would kill any germs. Would it, wouldn't it not be beneficial for one of us to drink the water so that that way we could test that theory? And die not of excruciating it. death. Not, not it. it. Yeah. And not it. No, no one else. No one else. No, no one else is dying. I, I take a big swig of water. You, you, you can say some know. Catholic prayers over it and hope that that saves you. But I'm, I'm already, ha water. I'm I'm already halfway water. through my glass of water and my milkshake and my sandwich. Oh. Yeah, I'll All drink right. the water. Well, no, we, do. we don't need two. One's fine. You're yeah. a good man, Eddie. Strong, brave. Dumb. Well, daft. <laughs> daft. Also, if there's lettuce on any of our sandwiches. Mm, you know, well, I, imagine, I imagine with the things that Odie puts in his mouth, he's probably got the constitution of an ox. <laughs> and then I sw take a swig out of my flask and put it right back into my shirt. Oh, how's the food? Is it good? The, the Guys, food actually tastes delicious. If we're, yeah, the, if we're being irradiated, then we're, we're, we're screwed already. Yeah, it's possible that we're all Mary Curie to the gills anyway, just by being up here in this weird sunspot. They should, they should make some sort of a badge that you could wear that would tell you if you were being irradiated. <laughs> gets, the glow gets bigger over time. <clears throat> Bob Crenshaw the, comes in. If we are worried about radiation, the safest uh, place to sleep in is our car. Uh, Bob Crenshaw comes in right now at that point holding a tray with uh, coffee cups on it and kind of yes. sets down, you know, one in, in front of each of you. It's about, he's like, uh, here's your uh, coffee. Uh, and you look in and each, each is about a third full of whiskey. Oh, thank you. Like, yep. Hey, Tyler, would it be a safe to assume that if we were at this um, Golden, Golden Nest Hotel and Spa, that we got here um, through going down Boardwalk and then up Franklin Avenue. Yes. Okay. We passed a church. What kind of church is that? Did if, we? You look, if you look on uh, the map, the if you look on the map, there is a church pictured right next to Waller's store. What kind of church is that? Um. So when you were walking up that street, you, you, you know, you turned the corner of Boardwalk and Franklin and you, at first you passed Barnaby's gas station, which uh, is, you know, a gas station. You saw that they rent bicycles for like a dollar a day. Um, right next to that uh, was a, uh, it does look like a, a church on there. We'll, um, we'll say that it was actually a schoolhouse and that's oh. the, uh, the schoolhouse, uh, uh, whatever you, you call it, the, the steeple. Um, next to, uh, to that uh, was uh, Waller's store. Yeah. And then next to that was... Um, Us. Well, no, there was one more store after that. I want to make sure I'm telling you the right thing, though. It is... Oh, the Sweet Home Bakery. Well, when you walked past it, you saw that um, 
you, you look you were able to kind of see on the map that that's what the map calls it is uh, sweet home bakery and when you walk yeah. past it you could see that where there were um some uh letters at one point like with the fading in that you could see that it was uh it, it had at one point been called um uh, sweet home bakery uh, but now there's like a little sign there that said sign shining Saul S O L gifts. Uh, but the, the store appeared to be, uh, closed down. There was a white curtain covering the door and, uh, the front window. Okay. So I just mistake that as a church, not, it's a schoolhouse. Yeah. It's okay. not an awful lot of church. There's an awful lot of churches in this town. It's a, well, and there are all over small towns, but it's interesting, Robert, you should point out again, how many businesses here have names that are about light? Well, and, Shining Sun, Shining Soul. Yeah, exactly. Ray of Light SOL. Gallery. Yeah, everything here is light-based. Yeah. You'd think it hadn't just been this way recently. And Golden... So maybe it happens once in a while. And sunshine. And let's, ask, let's ask uh, uh, our well, man. We've got a generous host right now. Yeah. And, uh, and to that, let's all have a whiskey. A uh, coffee? Here, here. <laughs> we've <laughs> had horse proof. <laughs> had we've horse. It's like raw corn whiskey. It's been cut. But uh, I don't know with what. Oh, well, this is helpful. So when he comes back in the room, we'll ask him. Okay. Yeah, he comes back in to ask you how your food is going. Well, it's delicious. How long have you lived here? Oh, I've lived here... Uh, been going on about 10 years now. I, I, I bought the cafe uh, from the previous owner and, you know, it's a great summer town that, you know, we just, uh, you know, kind of comes in, you know, the business comes and goes uh, with, you know, with the weather. Do you ever have summers or winters like this before? No, you know, usually our, our winters are, you know, actually get, get pretty bad. Um, we don't get many people in here in the winters because the roads uh, coming into town tend to get, uh, snowed in uh, but uh, you know with this great weather and every time he says weather he kind of looks outside um, and, and pauses for a second and then continues and, and says uh, you know with this with this great weather it, you know we've been having you know it, it's almost like a boom for the town right now yeah it sure must be I'm surprised things aren't boarded up uh, in November Oh well, you know so, some of the town, some of the uh, businesses do, uh, but you know we typically have enough to uh, with the people coming in in the winter. You do get some some people who want to kind of vacation during the winter, or uh, the people who live in the town. You know they they help support the businesses. Yeah, uh, and I mean, how many people in town have their own stones? Would you say stones? Oh, oh you mean the the. the the, the worship stones the, yeah, yeah. The oh stone. i i couldn't tell you there's you know maybe a dozen or so that i've i've heard about maybe more i i, I do honestly, have one? no i i don't do you I belong don't. to a church that has one uh no not not really i've just been you know I, i'm so busy here and you know when i'm done here i just go outside and, and enjoy the weather yeah but you don't you enjoy the weather not in fellowship just so, just solo? Yeah. yeah Do you, you think know. most people in town are solo or are they part of a, a group? Um, as far as I know, I, I think most people are just kind of here for the weather. I, I you know, I, I've seen, you know, some people on some lawns kind of holding hands and, uh, you know, heard them kind of, you know, uh, talking and, you know, and enjoying each other. Uh, but, uh most of the people are just, you know, here to en enjoy this great, great weather. Now, in the summer, when you have summertime, is this what it's like in summertime? So, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we don't often get, you know, a, 
you know, a, a summer like this that that lasts uh, this long? It could be, Mason, that everything is named here for the tourists in the summer. Yeah. And so all of the sun references and the warmth references, they're, that's for the tourists when they come in the, every summer. What was the so. name of the lady at the, at the hotel, the mystic there? Priestess Cecil? Celia. Celia. Sylvia? Celia. 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 Well, well uh, how I, I, much I, I, do we owe you? Celia, I, Celia you give, Robinson, maybe? He gives you each a, uh, a couple of, uh, you know, a bill for like $2 each. You know, really cheap food. Yeah. Two dollars, that's a month's salary. <laughs> Whatever would be appropriate in 1920s cafes. A nickel. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. You know, per dish, maybe. Well it's not it's not the it's not the uh twenty or thirty cents each. Yeah. It's not the um the depression yet. That's a couple years off still. And he, he takes it and, and gives you all your change and you know, he says, you know. Please come back. You know, we, we get pretty busy, you know, once the sun goes down, but you know, you know, you please come back uh, whenever you can. Oh, we, uh, we thank you for your hospitality, your fine food and your excellent coffee. Uh, no people, I have a plan. Uh, I see there's a Dr. Burns here. I think we should talk to him. Maybe he'll have some idea what's going on with this town. Maybe. I mean, if there's any poisoning, I guess he's the one we should be on to that. Or we should at least inform him that we think it's radiation. Unless he's the one doing it to everybody. Uh, yeah, so I think we can go, you know, walk in there and pretend that we're from the health department. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I feel like going on a shopping spree. Well, you go on a shopping spree. I'm curious, outside... Does it look like it's about seven o'clock? Nope. It it I mean it looks like the sun has gone down a little bit, but it's still bright. It still looks like it's two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Really? Right, no. At that point, everybody give me a sanity check. Yeah. yeah. You can clearly see that the the light is not where it should be. This isn't some <laughs> trick. Oh my That's god, I passed it. I passed it. I passed. I passed. I yeah, just, just no, nothing. Passed. Nothing. If you passed it, just one. If you, uh, if you I didn't. failed. What in the heck is going on? I can't believe oh. I passed it. Peter, did you did you show uh, Susan's photograph to the proprietor? Oh, no, no, no. Let's show this to him. By the way, we're here. Uh, we're looking for Robert's daughter. Have you by chance seen her? Has she come in to eat here? He looks at the photo. He's like, ah. Eh. Looks a little familiar, but you know we get so many people in here. She may have been in here, and uh, yeah. yeah. And do you get a lot of church groups as as tourists, or is it just regular? You know, just everybody. Yeah, we do. Yeah, um, you know, we get lots of different people here. Uh, some church groups. It all depends on you know what's going on, and you know we get a lot of uh, retreats coming up here. Well, remember they've been doing this retreat. This retreat is an annual thing for them, so we know that that group has been here every year. Um, right. Why, um, in all the time that we've been in here, has anybody, any other customer come in? No, you've, you've seen people walk past, uh, but nobody has really uh, come in. It seems like people want to stay in the sun. Or, or maybe they're just not hungry, or, or I wonder if loss of appetite is a sign of poisoned or that, or both. to ask real quick question oh by the way i'm a little scatterbrained what's today's date anyway um i he kind of looks back at the the um the calendar uh january something i guess i i don't you know what i work so much i i i you know don't really don't really know do you, you wouldn't happen to have today's paper? I needed to check something or where I could buy a newspaper or today's paper. Uh, I don't have it, but if you go down to the gas station, I think they have them. Okay, thank you. Do you know the day of the week? Uh, is it Monday or Tuesday? 
not not sure. Um, you know, with with this great weather, you know, who who needs to keep track of the days? Yeah, I agree. It doesn't matter anyway. Well, so, if you keep the Sabbath sacred, then it matters. Oh, well, now you're religious. <laughs> Not to you, I'm saying it to him. <laughs> well, I mean, as a culture in the Northeast, like I'm, I'm surprised that you are doing business, like many businesses, you know, food necessities, sure, you can be open on a Sunday. Well, yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not open on Sundays. So we know it's not a Sunday. Right. So what was the last day you were closed? Uh, give, give me a psychology roll. Actually, anybody who's, who's still on there. Yeah. 22, I'm sweet. I succeed. I, I made pass. it. He, he kind of succeeded. Uh, Howard for me. Yeah. So for those who made it, you, you can see him kind of thinking, and he finally just smiles and, and says, oh, you know, I, I you know, don't know. You know, with, with the, all this great weather that we've been having uh, and, you know, the people coming in, I probably haven't closed in a while. I mean, why, you know, why give up that money when you know we're in such a boom? Right. You really get the feeling that he he really doesn't know. He just couldn't. Could, he just can't remember. Anyways, I, I walk over towards the door and I'm just looking outside. This is damn peculiar. Where can we? Uh, I, I think we should all uh, have a, a minute to talk about what we think is going on, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someplace quiet. Like, maybe a, a shady glen away from these freaks, because there's something crazy about this town. Uh, here's a good oh, question. Look. Something we haven't actually asked yet of, of each other. Do any of us have watches or pocket watches? Or? I have. I do have a silver pocket watch. What time does your silver pocket watch say that it's supposed to be? It says about 7.30 p.m. 7.30 p.m. That's why I mentioned it up by the car there. It should have been 6 o'clock. It, it would have been dark in Arkham. And so your clock corresponds to their clock. Correct. I'm waiting on showing you. Even though I thought when we came into town, it was going to be something like 11 o'clock. Something is very, very strange. Yeah, so, and if it was the people who were strange only, I would say, okay, the people are strange. This is <coughs> crazy. If it was the weather was strange only, I would say the weather is strange here. But they both don't make any sense. Nothing here makes any sense. If if this was Arkham, I'd say it was witchcraft. But but I believe what my watch, my my uh, pocket watch says is the correct time to what we should be what we expect it to be. It didn't, I don't believe the time changed. It's like only my, been a few hours since we were right. taking a car out of a snowbank. Right, but I mean, it, it, it syncs up with the correct time. It's just the sun is not the correct position. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to say that I find myself confused at this point. I hope my confusion, my confusion isn't because I'm losing my mind. What is you anyone else notice that tomorrow is still going to be February? It's a leap year, and so tomorrow is the leap day. If ah. I guess it, we're in 28th, right? Today's 28th February, right? Yeah. Today has to be a leap year in this year. Um, let's let's do something. Indulge me. Let's drive around the town a little bit. Maybe, yeah. maybe there's a chance that Susan will come out of a shop or she'll be walking, or something, and we'll see her. And then we can go over to that doctor's of yours that you saw on the map. Yeah. And see if he knows anything about the strange. But my guess is he's going to be like the guy in the kitchen. You guys do that. Why don't somebody come with me? We're going to go shopping. Why don't you check out the, the stuff? You know, I actually think I'll go shopping. I'll the come with you, stuff? James. Yeah. I'm wondering, I think, I think looking around town, making sure the map is accurate is a good idea. I also think that we should see if there are, uh, I mean, we've got two cars full of winter coats 
and things. I'm, I'm thinking about maybe we should go out of town, see where the snow begins again. One or two of us stays in winter, in the present, in reality. And then, and then you come and get us tomorrow and, and we can say, here's our diary. Give, that give, means, me an, give me an idea roll. That means that you're going to be camping out in the winter without even a tent. Well, and I, no, I may have winter, asked this. We get in the car. I may have asked this before, but when we look up at the mountains around us, are they snow tipped? Yes. So we can see where the snow is. Right. But you can and, see snow from warm places all over the world. Right. But I think it's a 20 minute drive instead of four miles. It's your theory that time is moving differently here somehow. And, and so any, anybody who made their idea roll, when Mason says that, you do remember we, outside when you were back in the winter, it was sub zero temperatures. Right. And you don't have heaters in the car. Right. Mason, no. But I mean, I, this, that is, that is the, I mean, I'm assuming that we can buy some kind of protection in town because they don't know that there isn't winter. And also, between us, we have 40 fur and wool coats. Like, if you plant me not in deep winter, or, or two of us, probably more wisely, but just as things start to melt, or on the other side, and a giant mound of fur and wool, I can survive a night. I know how to build a fire. I can be full of food. I'm not going to free, I'm not going to, it's not going to be 75 degrees below zero. Well, it's, it's an interesting experiment, but what do you hope to find out? Well, well, real quick, Mason, maybe you could paint a line on the floor and see if the, it's expanding outwards. The floor of? Like, on the ground. Get, get to the road where it divides and put a, a line or a, a scratch on the ground and see if the snow's receding out from this location. You mean yeah. to test whether it's getting warmer or not? To see bigger. if the circle of heat is moving farther out into the wilderness. Is yeah. it is the radius expanding? Yeah, I, I'm worried about regarding that idea. You know, the road gets wider when it's warmer, or things melt and they spread. Like I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on in people's heads in this town where no one can tell whether it's December or January or February. Or well, you could were here for two days or six days. And it would also give you a test of something else too. We know that the young boy was suffering from withdrawals. That's true. Butch and Robert could yoke somebody up and throw them in the trunk and then see what happens when you take them outside the snow. But there's, there's no reason to believe that our, for our Mr. Benjamin isn't on drugs. Sure. Why would you disregard that? He looked like he was on drugs. My guess is he was on drugs. And his tan is probably told where everyone's tan. I'm trying to figure out whether what the deep confusion that I'm feeling is because of the food, the water, the radiation. None of us are in a cult, as far well, as I know. Okay. My only proposal is why don't we just find Susan and leave? And with that, Daniel says, yes, we, why are you talking about going shopping and looking where the snow is? We are here to find my daughter. That is what I'm paying you for. Because, Daniel was here. <laughs> because there's something going on here. You're and curious. We're curious about it. And how do you know that we will not encounter Susan in one of these places? You're, you're yeah, right. She, we, we might. And she's a kid. She's probably going to be shopping. That's all they know, right? So and let's, the, let's find her. Then you can take us back and then come back here and do whatever you want. Well, we, the problem is that we went to the religious space that you last saw her at. She was not present. There was no sign of her. And we were told that she wasn't there. I don't trust Pastor Thompson. But when he says not, oh, I don't know where she is, or she went home, but she joined the enemy. And we know that there are multiple stones in this town that people worship. I'm assuming 
she's with a different stone. Maybe pre Cecilia. Okay, well, this is what we this is what we can figure out from what clues we have. She is worshiping a false god. That mean that can mean that she's either gone over to the Catholic Church, which we haven't investigated, or she's with Cecilia, which we haven't investigated yet. By the way, is Cecilia's last name Robinson? Because if you look on the map, she owns property here. She owns a store. I don't know. How would, oh. Nobody here can answer that question. We well, but to... hence why the shopping. We, we need can't to find ask out. her. We can go to her shop. Well, you can go to her shop, but she's not there if it's her. She's at the hotel. Why don't you just go to the hotel and talk to her? Well, she was. Busy. Shouldn't some of us go back to the cottage to see if they're done with their religious sermon? So maybe we can talk to the priest again. Well, they seem to say when the sun went down, and the sun should be down as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, at the ratio that things have changed since we arrived, do we think we're halfway toward sunset? A third, two thirds? I just had a reddening in the west. Is it even the west? Um, I'm going to step outside it's, for a moment. Looks like mid afternoon. Okay. And for the record, this Cecilia lady owns a shop called the Ro uh, the Robin's Nest, which sells books, handmade crafts, silver, copperware, uh, candles, and clothes. Okay. Well, she's the pri proprietor of said establishment. Hence, we might be able to find one of these worship stones there so we can see what we're talking about what hang on are we are we sure that it's um are we sure that, that Celia is the same yeah. person that owns the store if you yes. look to the side it's on the side the ad one of the advertisements uh, oh right. okay 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 i forgot which one i sent you i'm sorry um <laughs> Was I not supposed to know that, Tyler? No, 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 no. Well, that's fine. I'm just spelling really Whistle good. Cafe. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you're good. You're I, good. I want to step outside, and I want to look at the sun, but I don't want to burn the retinas of my eyes. Um, I'm going to, if I've, if I've got, maybe I've got the receipt, and I'm going to poke a little hole in it, and I'm going to hold it up so that it makes, you know, the way you do when there's a, a, an eclipse. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I can see, is the sun round? <laughs> I mean, I just, yeah. there's nothing wrong with the sun. So give me, do you have any science? Any, well, any type of like physics or astronomy or? I've got biology. I've probably taken, uh, I mean, I am a biology major. So um, You know what? Give me an EDU role. Okay. Uh, 58 out of 60. Okay. So you, you do that and you know, you see like the, the dot pinhole or whatever, the, the, right. the lights that the, uh, the sun makes. Um, but give me a sanity check because you do that and the sun is, I mean, you're not, you're not a physicist. You're not a astronomer. You've taken the classes and you've done this experiment before, but it, that the dot of the sun looks a little bit bigger than it should. Okay. Yeah, my 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 insane thought is that the sun is not the sun because it's in the wrong spot. However, I badly fail. I got a, an 89. All right, then just lose one. All right. I'm like, so I'm kind of freaked out. Guys, guys. Watching the experiment, I'm reminded, uh, Oscar, the did you take the receipt out of the Bible from the pastor's cabin? Yeah. You guys were in the pastor's cabin? What the hell? We covered this at some point, I'm sure. Oh. Should check out, you know, who was whether Susan's clothes were there, for example. Anyway. I uh I hand the, the, the receipt for? over to uh Mason. And it's just for the uh the purchase you know, rent in the cabins for Yeah. Is it for the two days that it was supposed to be or three? Or is it for all this time? It was for the uh, original two days. It was for the first two days. The people who refused rooms to new renters just feel like they've been weak, I have to assume, think that it's still the same two days. 
See, everyone's talking about like, ah, oh, like things will get better when the sun goes down and blah, 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 when it's nighttime and things like that's what I'm saying. Maybe everyone's out of skew on what day it is because the sun's been up. And so they've just been awake for like a month or whatever, how long, because they think it's just been a couple of hours when in fact it's been a couple of weeks. As Janis Joplin said, it's all the same fucking day, man. Who? <laughs> 22 Who? years. Uh, it's my cousin, Janis Joplin. She's a lovely lady. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I mean, if we can't rent a room because they've been renting the same room for two days for two and a half months, <clears throat> we can't trust anybody in this town. They seem nice. You know, we better touch. hope that your theories about time moving differently here are wrong. Otherwise, we may have already been here a month. No, it's in their heads. It can't be real. I know the sun looks weird, but it has to be in their heads because the sun and the earth don't change. Everybody more, give me an idea roll. It's, it's more than weird. It's like the sun's closer. My God, I got a 94. Oh, critical, critical success. I can so see Apollo too. and he's on his little chariot flying over. So for those who made it, you know, Peter says that and you start to think too. And yeah, you, you're pretty sure you got here you know, just a couple hours ago, but yeah, you know, maybe it's just the, the sun, the heat from the sun, but you know, it's kind of hard to, to tell maybe. You're okay. How, how, how far away was uh, Evergreen from here? Yeah. It took you guys, uh, to, because of the weather, it took you a good three, four hours. And granted, you also went off the road in, in that time, um, but it's about 30 miles. How about this? How about we sink or, how about we sync up our watches and figure out what time it is? We'll say noon. And then we all look at our watches and then check them throughout the day to see if the time is the same. Okay. Um, I think that makes sense. I would choose six and not noon. Well, no, I'm just saying but I'm just saying we, yeah, I, I think we should keep it keep an eye on what is because maybe what, the next off, thing is part of the radiation thing. Well, something Working off uh, Mason's idea, um, what if we, uh, two of us, drove back to, to Evergreen? Yeah, I actually think that's what, an important idea. Find out what, what day it yeah. is there. Because then that means we'll know whether, we know when we left Evergreen the first time, and we'll see what time it is when we're back. So we'll be able to clarify whether it's people going crazy here. Um, couldn't we just call? There's no, no phone lines, phones. genius. Phone lines are down. Um, well, once again, why don't we just find Susan and go? Well, that's that's about. I mean, all we like, for, well, I don't really care what's going on here. I'm here to help Danny find uh, find the girl, and we go. Like, you know, I think okay. that's maybe and, and Daniel starts to agree with you, and you can see him starting to, you know, argue, start his argument that you should be going and finding Susan, and then he stops and he kind of looks back behind the buildings, uh, and he goes. It's Susan, and just starts taking off between the buildings, uh, heading towards. I run, towards, uh, I run off them. I run yeah, off them. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. We start running, uh, but I'm running next to Mason, and I say, uh, "See how Mason? I think I just put a hole in our radiation theory." <laughs> um, so I said, and that's that Robert. <laughs> Robert isn't showing any kinds of radiation sickness, and he was here. And he left. You mean Benjamin? No, no. I mean Robert. Robert. Daniel. Daniel. No, who's... I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. Daniel. confused there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Well, Daniel, yeah. Daniel seemed... He, Daniel had the tan, and Daniel right. was desperate to get back to town. And Benjamin had the tan, although heavier. And that's about as far as you get in the conversation before you you make it. You make it only one street over. So if you're looking at the map, you're on Washington Avenue. And you, uh, Daniel is, has just stopped in the middle of the road and is looking down a little bit. And you see a number of people uh, sitting in a circle in front of one of the yards, their, their hands uh, held together and their heads down. And you can see very clearly Susan sitting there. Uh, she appears to be holding everybody's hand, but also, you know, in one hand, clutching something uh, against her chest. But the thing that's most remarkable about all of them 
is that they were all dressed in robe in white robes from head to toe. Uh, and Susan is kind of sitting at the head of them wearing some type of headgear that, that looks almost like a crown. Okay. Like an Egyptian type headdress? Give me a uh, give me an anthropology uh, role. I have or no history. anthropology. So I have did, no for, for so someone who doesn't know, oh, I've got anthropology. Would would yes. she look like she's the leader of this group? You kind of get that impression, yeah. Okay, cool. I, I got a lie. hard pass. All right. So those who who pass, it actually looks um, almost Japanese. Huh. Like Shinto, Shinto. Exactly. That's exactly what it looks like to you. Colors, metals, wood. I mean, we right. all tell it's colored metal or wood. It it looks metal. And Shiny, but I mean, it looks like it's it's kind of put together. It's it's not you know like something that's ancient or you know professionally put together. It looks like somehow they put it together and kind of bent the metal. I, think, I, I, I missed something. What are you talking about? The, the crown. Oh, crown. Okay. So hopefully this will show, but this is kind of what she looks like. Oh, oh wow. Scary. <laughs> Real Except relaxed. that her eyes are closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now she's kind of, you know, she's not so there. pissed off looking. <laughs> That's right there. And uh, Daniel is just kind of staring at her, his eyes um, just wide, almost in fright. And she's got a group around her of 20, you said, or 30? No, there's probably like six or seven of them. Okay, that's Half funny. a dozen. And they've stopped, and there's no obvious place that they've stopped. They're not around. It's No, they're just sitting in, in a front yard. They're just sitting oh. in the yard. And they're oh. doing the same thing the pastor was doing. Yep. Half of you guys are criminals. We could just smash and grab her. and. Yeah, that's them. my idea. I say we go talk to her first. If she doesn't listen, I'll go grab a bottle of chloroform. We put her in the back of the truck and drive until we reach civilization. That's my plan. Uh, what about all there, of her friends there? Yeah, that they're that, not her friends. Her father's here. This takes they precedent. think they're her friends. Maybe Maybe we should her just talk first. Is her hand glowing? She's obviously got a worship stone. Yeah, you see like glimpses of, of light. Um Peter and, and Robert and Butch, the, it seems to be, you, you can definitely see like the, the, the glints of, of light from the sun shining on, on it. The others, I'm, it's not as, uh, it's almost like a dull. I'm not going to touch anything. Yeah, man, I want the worship stone. I want my own cult. It, you already Dan have one. It's called the Catholic Church. Daniel looks at you and says, "You know, do something about her. Can't you see that she's not right?" We, well, Daniel, there she is. Let's get her and go. Yeah, let's go talk to her first. Well, you know what? Though, here's the thing: is if you talk to her, that gives away the element of surprise. No, we can come back and ambush her later. But first, right let's now, see everybody's got their eyes closed. God, I came well, up here. Well, go on, then, Robbie. Famous. Go on, Robbie. Go grab her. Come on, big guy. Is that what y'all want me to do? No, I, I think it's like what you want to do. I think I think we want to. I think we want to release Susan from this psychological confusion that she's having, and not violently abduct her. Okay, um, but it, everything it is awkward. everything is go. tied to this valley. For whatever is causing it, it's tied to this valley. If you get her outside of the confines of the valley. Yeah. You might break whatever hold it has on her. Or you could find what the link is. But understand this. If you kidnap somebody, that's breaking the law. No matter how you shake the dice, that's breaking the law. You guys have already we have her father here. We, we Robert, yeah, here. But remember, I'm, Ben left here, and he wanted to get back. It's not going to break shit. If she wants to yeah. be here, she's going to want to come back. Daniel wanted it's to get like back to this way, too. Exactly. I, might, exactly. I might not know too many things about book learning, but I do know numbers. And if you look around, we're outnumbered. So listen, we can always smash and grab, but that's the last resort. There's 450 people in this town. Hey, I'm They're not all kooky. I'm I not suggesting you. it in reality. I'm just saying is that is an option. I'm not I, saying let's do this. Look, guys. She's an adult. 
if she wants to be the leader of a cult, that's her business, regardless of what her daddy wants. And he looks at you and says, You're not seeing anything I wrong with the sentence. I am He's in a cult. To get her and bring her back. Yeah, but maybe um, it's time to let go. Would, would Susan, like, she knows all of us? She's met us before, or? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Matt, okay. yeah. I want to walk up and talk to her. Yeah, yeah I was I, just, I'm, I'm just getting sick of all the, the arguing going yeah. on. And I, I grab yeah. Odie and I say, Come on, let's go. You, you're good with, you've got the gift of the gab. Let's go, let's go okay. talk to the girl. Uh, you you walk up to them. Um, they're all just kind of sitting in the circle. They don't acknowledge you as you come up. Yeah. Susan. No acknowledgement. With that, she she op- opens her eyes and looks at you and says, "You will leave us," and then closes her eyes again. Oh, I I, out of curiosity. I mean, I know these guys are wearing robes, but from the looks of their face, from the looks of the other parishioners that we've seen, do they look emanci- uh, emaciated in any way? Nope. But they're not eating? Nope. Because there's nobody in the diner. I'm wondering if these people are so entranced in whatever they're doing that they don't eat. Yeah, quite the opposite. They look very healthy outside of the deep tans. Yeah, and at the diner, we learned that they only come in after sunset because basically we've entered a town. Yeah, but when sunset? <laughs> everyone worships a different sun god. And they're all magic stones. And we have to get the magic stones away from them if we're going to get any, if we're going to make anybody less sick. Maybe you could just yank the magic stone out of her hand while her eyes are closed. They seem real passive. Can I try yeah. to grab the stun? I wouldn't I do it. Toy out of my dog's mouth when he's not paying attention. <laughs> they they seem, for lack of a better word, dogmatic. You think that clubbing one of them over the head and dragging him off is going to be violent? What do you think is going to happen if you pull away this stone that they're worshiping? I don't know what's going to happen, but you guys keep wanting to abduct people. No, I don't. I don't. Let me get that through your head. I don't want to abduct her. I'm saying as a last option, that might be what it comes down to. Yeah, but Didn't that's the want, only option you, you give know, it We can always claim it, 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 it as an option. Yeah, yeah, everybody shut down. Go ahead and use a fighting brawl. Wait, what? What happened? Oscar, if you're going to try to grab the stone from her, you, uh, give me a fighting brawl roll. Oh, no, I was just—I was just gonna ask okay. if I could, but uh, look, I look. I said in the beginning, I pulled all. I just want to talk to the girl. I everyone's coming. Let's smash her head and let's grab her. Let's yeah. throw him in the boot. And I'm like, guys, let's just talk to the girl. She's a she's an yeah. adult woman. If she wants to be, as she wants to be. I have a suggestion. There seems to be one sort of rule that's working here for all of them. They're willing to talk at sundown. Why don't we just wait? We're being impatient. Yeah, yeah, but I'm scared okay. that the sun doesn't go down here. Wait, that here's is, my plan. In my how universe, that's not possible. You know, how about Mason and I sync up clocks and both of us will go outside town, we'll go to where the snow is and we'll huddle up for a couple of hours, or, you know, half a day. And then we'll come back at exactly noon of the next day and we'll come and get you guys. Yeah, and you, you stay here in the room till then. You and, guys go huddle happily. It's your body. Dan, Daniel hears you say this oh. and just goes, this is ridiculous, and runs towards Susan. Before anybody can stop him, he grabs her by ah. the shoulders and starts shaking her. Uh, she, Everybody around her stands up, including her. Oh, yeah. I, I, step back. I, go and, I, I go and pull Daniel off her. I just yank him away. Answer and to your when, question. <laughs> and, and, when, and when you do that... She, you know, she stands up, says, I said to leave us, holds out her hand and opens up her palm. And with that, everybody give me a sanity check. <laughs> I passed that one. 41. Uh, I, passed. Ooh, I passed one. First one. If, no, if you, I did not. I if you pass, it's uh, one point. If you failed, only uh, two of sanity. Uh, what would be the maximum of sanity you can lose? Two points. Okay, two points. <laughs> and you know, as she opens her hand is this amazingly bright 
uh, light radiates from it. While the, the light appears very warm and peaceful, it just blinds you. You don't know how long it lasts, but when you regain your vision, you look around and you can see it's nighttime. Nobody Whoa. else, uh, or um, Susan and her followers and Daniel are gone. And so are we still, standing where we were, or are we like on you're the floor? We're standing in the exact same place. So Daniel was in my arms, so and all of a sudden now he's not. Yes. Are we standing or lying or like standing? What time is it? You're in the exact same position you were. Okay. And with that, we'll stop. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on. Daniel was in my hands and he's gone. Yes. Uh. Holy now, my guess, my guess is they're right inside the house. We'll yeah. Find out. Oh, wow. And we've wasted our rent for the night at the hotel. Oh, like, geez. The mass is just... <laughs> oh, we'll go back and, and soak in the, in the spa. Our players included Jerry Bryan, Vinesh Ramakrishnan, David Gassaway, Zane Fleming, Jason Melnichok, and myself, with Tyler Hudak as the Keeper of the Secrets. We're currently producing four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to become a patron, visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We like reading them. This is Tom Rayleigh together with all the members of our gaming club inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.